Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about reflective DLL injection. So in one of our last videos, we have seen how normal DLL injection works. And at the end of the video, I have mentioned a couple of reasons why malware author has shifted their focus from normal DLL injection to reflective DLL injection. So what are the major advantages that reflective DLL injection has over normal DLL injection and how it bypasses different antivirus protection. So in today's video, we are going to dig into reflective DLL injection. So let's jump into our whiteboard. So before we get into reflective loading of DLL library, it is highly recommended that you have very strong understanding of portable executable file format. So if you don't have that clear understanding, I would request you to first read about portable executable file format. Uh, so here I have taken a very basic scenario. Uh, as you can see here, uh, a malicious .dll file is hosted on the internet and there is a process called actor.exe which is the actor process and there is a process called target.exe which is on the right side of the screen so the actor process actor.exe process is going to download this malicious.dll from the internet and inject that dll into the target process which is target.exe now what you have to notice here unlike the previous scenario we have seen where the malicious DLL file was saved in the disk. In this particular case, the DLL will never be saved at the disk. So the actor process is going to download this malicious.dll file into his memory. And from there itself, it is going to inject this uh, DLL file into target.exe. So when talking about reflective DLL injection, there could be several other way of reflectively inject a DLL into a remote process. Uh, but in this particular video, we are going to refer to this particular technique, which is uh, developed by Stephen Fewer, and the entire project is uh, open sourced, and it was a pretty old repository. It was uh, it was you know made open source around nine years ago. Uh, so he, if you have ever used Metapeter, so Metapeter actually use uh, this particular technique to you know reflectively inject DLL into processes. So let's talk about the DLL that we are going to inject into target.exe process. Uh, so the DLL that we are will be injecting into target.process is a specially crafted DLL. Uh, so the export table of this particular malicious.dll will have one extra entry, which is the reflective self-loader. Uh, so uh, in this particular example, I have used the name reflective self-loader. However, it can be of any name. Uh, so reflective self-loader function is actually a position independent function. So what does position independent function means? So just like shell code, uh, you can actually place uh, the code of this particular function anywhere in the memory and the code will execute seamlessly. It doesn't rely on any other, you know, any other DLL or any other external libraries to execute. So the first thing that actor process is going to do, it's going to download the malicious.dll file from internet and load it in the memory. And after that, it is going to uh, allocate some memory in the target process and you know copy the entire content of that malicious.dll file into the target process as you can see here in this particular example it starts with mz which means the the dll raw bytes are present in this memory after you know the actor process copies the content of dll to target.exe process and after that uh, the actor process somehow has to execute this, this position independent function which is exported from malicious.dll uh, so there there could be a few different ways to do that i'm going to come back to that later how the actor process is going to execute this reflective self-loader function and now once this reflective self-loader function is executed it is going to do a couple of things Let's discuss that one by one. So once the content of malicious.dll file is copied to the target process, the code of this reflective self-loader function also get copied to the target process. So now what actor process have to, has to do, the actor process has to somehow execute this reflective self-loader function. As, I, as we have already discussed, this reflective self-loader function is a completely position independent code. So once this reflective self-loader function get executed, it is going to reflectively load the content which is cop which was copied by actor.exe process within the target.exe process. It is going to reflectively load that binary image 
to target.exe process and it is going to execute that DLL. So this is known as reflective DLL injection. So that process is not very straightforward. I am going to come to that. So now let's understand how does this reflective self-loader function load itself within target.exe process in reflective manner. So the first thing what reflective self-loader function has to do, it has to find its own location is memory. So after that, it is going to utilize the already loaded kernel3.dll's export table to resolve three API addresses, which are load library A, get proc address, and virtual alloc. So once these three APIs are resolved, it is going to allocate some memory within the target.exe process. So those memory, those allocated memory regions it will be used to keep the different section of this malicious.dll file. So once this memory allocation is done, uh, this reflective loader is going to copy different section and headers of this malicious.dll file into this newly created memory blocks within target.exe process. After that, library's header and sections are loaded into the new location in memory. Then the reflective loader will process the newly loaded copy of its image import table, loading any additional library that is required for the DLL to run. So how it is going to do that? In the second step, you might have seen, we have resolved the address of load library A and get proc address from the kernel 32.dll. So it is going to utilize these two APIs that we have resolved in this step to find out to load additional libraries that is required for malicious DLL to run within the target.exe process. The reflective loader will then process the newly loaded copy of its image relocation table. It is going to parse the relocation table of this malicious.dll and it will do necessary relocation of this newly loaded image. Then the reflective loader will call its newly loaded images entry point function. The library has now successfully loaded into the memory. Now we'll do some code walkthrough of this particular project. So the first thing that we are going to look at is the reflective self-loader function. So let's see where does this function exist, exist in this particular project. So we have to go to this DLL folder and we have to go to SRC. After that, we have to go to reflective loader.c. So this is the function uh, that are, that is responsible for this reflective loading. So this is pretty well commented code. As you can see, the step the step zero starts from here. So as you can see, the step zero is calculates our image's current base address. And what does it mean? Which means it first it is going to can calculate where this uh, position independent code exists in the target.exe process. And from there, we'll find out the base address. After that, step one is process kernel 32's export table to find the, to resolve three API addresses. So it is going to use the export table of kernel 32.dll, which is already loaded in the target.exe process to resolve the these three APIs. And the next step is memory allocation for different sections. So in this particular line, uh, what you can see, it is actually using the virtual alloc API to allocate memory for different section of this malicious.dll file. And once this allocation is done, it is going to eventually copy different headers and section into that newly allocated memory. So after that, it is going to process its own import table to see if there is any additional de dependency that is not loaded within the target.exe process uh, so that it can load those DL files. So next step, it is going to process all its image relocation stuffs. And the last and final step is uh, calling its newly loaded images entry point function which is in this case DLL main with DLL process attached. The library has now successfully been loaded into this target.exe process. So this is how reflective loading actually works. So that's what I wanted to share in today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. So if you have any doubt and require any clarification, please uh, feel free to drop a comment or send me a direct message. Uh, I'll try my level best to get those clarified. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.